kids who graduate from high school who see no other option but going into the military because there are so few other opportunities. And I can't blame the kids. They are being propagandized from right and left. Catherine Lutz, an anthropologist who wrote an excellent book about a military city, Fayetteville, North Carolina, concluded, in an important sense, though, we all inhabit an army camp mobilized to lend support to the permanent state of war readiness that has been with us since World War II. There's also the incredible cost of our military. The price of one bomb would be a great help for any school. And many schools in this country are decaying even in affluent neighborhoods. There isn't enough money to support our schools. And this is the richest country in the world. Yeah. Um, then there is the environmental impact of war industries, of war exercises, and preparation for war, even before we kill people. The toxicity of our military establishment is enormous. Not only the toxicity, but the use of resources is fantastic the amount of fuel that it requires to refuel planes in space, and even to get those refueling planes to the things. There's a, there's a wonderful book about that on, on the list here. But the use of, I mean, the, something like six gallons of gas to, to get an Abram tank of one mile, or you know, an incredible amount. I don't know if that's a figure, but it's, it's just an unbelievable amount. Sorry, I don't have all the numbers in my head, these days they fall out. So, so now I'm coming to the point that I, that I really want to make, is the question of why are so few people perturbed about all of this monstrosity? Why is it so quiet? Why the election was so quiet about foreign policy, about war, about militarization, uh, as well as things like the prison industrial complex and many other related things. Now, some people say the reason why things are quiet is because of the lack of, of a draft. They said, we don't have a draft, so people aren't concerned because they're not going to be called in to fight. But it could be a part of it. It could not, I don't think it's a major factor. It can't account for the vast silence. Protest against the Vietnam War was hardly limited to the draft eligible. I was part of a faculty group that created a teach-in at New York University, which was where I was teaching at the time. And we were trying to inform and energize the students. We also were marching against the war. This was in, in New York City. And the clergy that protested the war were not thinking of their own skins. They were not worrying about the draft. And they probably weren't even that worrying that much about their parishioners being drafted. But it was a moral issue for them. But now, very little, very little from clergy. Now, I don't know all the answers. I'm just going to suggest what some of the reasons might be. And that is, comes under the headings of propaganda, fear, distractions, and interests. They provide some explanation for the silence. The propaganda, first of all. People in this country have been taught from an early age that the United States is a beacon <coughs> of the world and its foreign policy is always intended for good. Now we are told that our violence is humanitarian. We are liberating people. We are bringing them democracy and women's rights. Very many people want to believe this, and they do. Recent immigrants and those who benefit from government provision, including Social Security and Medicare recipients, and I'm certainly one of those, are grateful for their relative advantages and do not want to look too closely at the full scope of our nation's activities. 
On the other hand, citizens who are denied essential social services because of inadequate funds don't usually relate that to our trillion dollar arsenal. So I'm gonna step on a lot of toes because I'm suggesting that programs like Social Security have helped to silence older people, senior citizens, because they are grateful, they, you know, they, they, they don't feel they're gonna necessarily lose it, but they have a, a warm feeling toward the United States government, and they don't look at the full range of their policies. Lately, we hear from the media and our government that only sissies pay attention to international law and the UN Charter. It used to be the pointy-headed intellectuals who were the spoil sports. Gosh, talking about international law, I, I gave a course on international, a lot of people don't even know there is such a thing in this country. And I'm talking about educated people. 